Hi there and welcome to Retro and Toys and I'll get straight to the point. Today I'm going to be talking about future collectibles because if you think about it we've all dreamed about going around a car boot in the 90s finding all that Star Wars stuff there all that great G.I. Joe, He-Man, Care Bears yet back in the 90s the thing that was popular then blue and white plates, Toby jugs things that don't really hold any value now. So what we want to be doing when we go around the car boot is trying to source a few future collectibles, things that we can put up now that'll be worth a lot of money in the future. So I'm going to talk you through what I think will be valuable in the future. And we're going to start off with the girls toys first for today's video. And I think in at number four would be a toy that my daughter has absolutely loved cost me a lot of money at Christmas trying to find these because they'd stopped making them and these were called Littlest Pet Shop so I'm going to talk you through Littlest Pet Shop right now Littlest Pet Shop was formed by Kenner in the 90s there was a spin-off cartoon for it but sadly it was a bit of a flop it kind of failed but in 2005 Hasbro relaunched it and they added a whole load of new features, including the bobble head. And there were magnets underneath these toys. And there was so much variety to collect. So many different variations of cats and dogs. What you want to be on the lookout for is the cats and the dogs. Because these can command really high values. Particularly certain variations of them. Right, if we move on to what I feel is going to be the third most popular toy for girls in the future. I'm going to have to say LOL. My daughters were massive onto LOL and I'm going to talk you through that now. LOL dolls. They were formed in 2015 by again Isaac Larian of MGA and the clever thing about them was they came in these capsules and you can see one here and you couldn't find out what you was going to get because it was all sealed up so it was like a surprise my daughter my youngest daughter absolutely loved these and it cost a fortune now the clever thing about this was there was a massive chart with probably about 100 different variations of dolls that they did and they were divided into common ones that were easy to find rarer ones and ultra rare and if you look at the picture on the right these are all ultra rare ones that I've picked up this one here, the unicorn one, during its heyday, they were going for about £40 on eBay, probably a little bit more. Now these dolls, they don't just come as single dolls like this. You can also buy the pet version that goes with unicorn. You could buy the little sister and you can form a set with them. So this is probably the rarest one I've got here, Queen Bee. But these dolls now are so easy to find at car boots and you can either fail at them and end up with dolls like this that aren't worth anything or you can get lucky and land on the rarer ones so if you do your homework find out which aloe aloe are quite rare pick them up in 10 to 15 years time i do believe that these will be highly sought after but remember the thing is the key thing is to try and find them with all their original accessories right i think at second place the toy that's going to be the most collectible in the future is definitely going to have to be Monster High dolls. Now these hit the shelves in 2010 and they were absolutely huge. And I'm going to talk you through them now. Back in 2010, Mattel launched a brand called Monster High. They were designed by Garrett Sanders and the concept of the doll were based on horror movies. They were kind of creepy and ghoulish and at Christmas 2010 they had parents panicking because they were sold out everywhere they were fetching hundreds they kind of dropped off in 2015 but there's a massive fan base for these dolls and if you're lucky enough to own an original boxed first wave doll of Monster High they're looking at £300 in value loose models of these they can fetch about £80 too so there is really high value in these dolls and they're only going to get higher. The two dolls I have here are both Claudine Wolfs. 
This one here is just a common one. It's not worth particularly a lot at all. This one here is from the festival edition and unfortunately her hair's a bit shabby so she's losing value there. She's worth roughly about £20. Monster High were a very, very successful brand during their time. But I think the biggest girls brand, and you probably won't be surprised to hear this, is going to be Bratz dolls. Now these were formed by NGA and I'm going to talk you through Bratz right now. Back in 2001, Isaac Larian released the Bratz doll. He was working for MGA Studios and it caused a huge row with Barbie. But the doll was a huge success and my daughters absolutely loved them. And the reason why I think Bratz will be the number one collectible for girls in the future is just because it's just iconic of its time. It's fashionable, there's so many different variations you can get of it. And what you want to look for is the first wave. The first wave, if you get a brand new one that's in the box, you're looking at hundreds. Hundreds. If you get them loose, you're still looking up to £100. Everything with Bratz is all about condition. So what you need to do is make sure that the hair hasn't been cut, that there's no damage to the body, and you need to find them in their original outfits. So if you see them out in the wild, always pick them up, keep on to them, and these will go up in value. So with that in mind, don't go off straight away to the car boot and buy every single Bratz, LOL, doll, or monster high that you see because you've always got to remember there's a ccr rule condition completion and rarity so what you want to be looking for is first of all condition dolls make sure there's no hair cut or damage to the feet or anything like that and secondly if you can find a doll that's complete or any toy that's complete then this value just triples and Thirdly, the most important is rarity. Now, for example, I'm going to show you what happens with Star Wars because I always see people saying, oh, it's old, it's rare, it's retro. But in reality, not everything that's retro has value. What we have here is four Star Wars figures from the 80s, all roughly about the same age, roughly about the same condition. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, these are all worth a fortune. But in actual fact, you're wrong. Because you can pick up a Nitco like this on eBay or practically anywhere for about a pound or two. The same with Lando Calrissian. But figures like Boba Fett, highly desired and highly sought after, figures like that in that condition are fetching about 30 to 40 pounds. And if he's got his weapon, you can probably double that price. Cloud Car Pilot, he's quite rare. You don't see many of them about. He's only fetching about 10 to 15. So even though these figures are all very old and very vintage, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be valuable. And the same thing applies to future collectibles. So that's why rarity is so important. Right, I'll be covering a video about boys' toys soon. And also, the toys we've mentioned today, I'm going to do some more videos going into some more detail about the rarity and if you like the video you've seen today uh, please like and subscribe I've only got a few subscribers at the moment and I'm a very new channel so my editing needs a lot of work but thank you for watching this video today and I hope you come back again in the future bye